Hi, the goal for this JUnit hands-on presentation is to quickly get you started to write JUnit test classes for your Java applications. By the end of it, you will know how to write a JUnit test class for your Java classes, how to use the JUnit annotations to mark the test methods in your JUnit test class, how to assert the expected behavior on your methods using the assert methods provided by JUnit framework, and also how to test the exception cases that is to test and see if your method throws the expected exceptions when you pass in invalid data. For this purpose we'll simulate a mini e-commerce application that gives us a list of orders placed by a particular customer back when you pass in a customer name to it. The customer details DAO class has one customer map field which is a Java collections map and it uses the customer name as the key and it stores the list of orders for that customer as the value. We build this map inside the customer details DAO constructor. We create a new hash map instance and then we create a array list of orders. We add one order to it and then we add this list of orders to the customer map with the key as the customer name which in this case is Bharat. The get orders method in the customer details DAO takes in the customer name as the parameter and then it returns the list of orders for him by retrieving them from the customer map which we have just built in the constructor. In a real-time application we will be retrieving this data from the database and then we'll build this map and then pass it back to the UI layer or the web layer which will display it to the admin user or the end user but in this case for simplicity reasons we have built it in the constructor. And the get orders method also throws a invalid parameter exception, invalid param exception which is a user defined exception when the customer name that is passed in is null or if it is blank. The invalid param exception is a user defined exception and it extends the runtime exception class. Now the test class for this customer details DAO at a minimum should test and see that the get orders method returns a valid list of orders when a valid username is passed in and also it should test and see that it throws a this get orders method throws a invalid param exception when the customer name that is passed in is null or blank. So these are the two test scenarios the test class should cover at a minimum. Before we look at the test class if you notice the package structure or the folder structure for this project is a little different from the earlier hands-on examples you have seen. It has two source folders one is the src folder and it also has a test source folder the package structure for your test class and the package structure for your actual implementation or the application class are the same and the test class name has the class name ending with test at the end. The JUnit test class for the customer details DAO has two test methods marked using the at test annotation that the JUnit framework provides with. Here is the test annotation and the first test method tests to see if the customer details DAO's get orders method returns a list when we provide it with a valid customer name which is Bharat in this case and the asset not null method is a static method on the JUnit framework's assert class and it makes sure that whatever comes back from the get orders method is not null. This is a very simple test to make sure that the get orders method works as expected and the second test we have is is to test and see if the get orders method throws a exception when we pass in the a null customer name as the parameter and we use when we do that using the expected attribute on the text test annotation the expected attribute takes a parameter class and makes sure that when this test is run, the get orders method should throw an invalid param exception. The other important annotations here are the at before annotation the, and the at after annotations. 
The add before annotation is used to mark the initialization methods for your JUnit test methods. And these methods, when you mark them using the add before, they are run once before every test method gets executed. And the uh, method that's marked using the add after annotation gets run once after every test method is run. So you should initialize and clean up anything that your test method requires within the methods marked using the add before and add after annotations. And if you want to carry the state across your test methods, you can initialize your initialize the data that your test method needs using the add before class and add after class annotations. As you can see, the add before and add after methods the methods marked using the add before class and add after class annotations are static and they are they happen or they are get executed once for the entire test class whereas the methods marked using the add before and add after annotations are run by the JUnit framework once for every test method once before and once uh, the method marked using the add before runs once before the every test method and the one marked with add after runs once after your test method gets executed. The name of these methods, the names of these methods can be anything, but you have to mark them using the appropriate annotations. Now let's see our test method or uh, test methods and test class in action. You can run it by going to the run menu here or you can also use the keyboard shortcut which is Alt Shift X. T. As you as you see, both the test methods pass, and they do assert the expected behavior of the customer details DAO class. To summarize, now you know how to write a test class for your Java classes, the package structure for it, and also how to use the JUnit annotations to assert the expected behavior of your Java classes and also how to test and see that your methods throw the expected exceptions using the expected attribute on the test annotation and how to initialize the de test data that your uh, JUnit test methods need. In this case, it's very simple. We create an instance of the customer details DAO in the init method that's marked with that before and then we initialize it back to null in the destroy method. But in complex applications, when we move on to the website, you will see that we'll be doing a lot of mocking. We create a lot of mock classes within the init method and initialize or uh, set them into the customer details DAO. You also know that the add before class and add after annotations will be run once for the entire class, whereas the methods marked with add before and add after run once before and one after each test method gets executed. Download this project from the link that I have posted on the blog post, play around with it, add your own test cases, see what happens when you pass in a key that is not present in the map here and uh, write, come up with a test case that covers that scenario. In the next session, I will show you how to do test driven development, TDD, where we'll be writing our first tests first even before we write our implementations and our tests will be driving our implementation. Please take a moment to visit our nonprofit One Village One India page on Facebook. Spread the word and please take up similar initiatives in your villages and communities. And also keep sharing and learning. Thanks for watching.